many places in scripture, probably more than you realize, talk about a great earthquake that will occur before the second coming. I'm not talking about the quote, earthquakes in diverse places either. We are talking about the big one. Revelation 16 verse 18 describes it this way. There was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. This will be a massive change to everything in the world and will happen prior to the second coming of Christ. Lucky for us, the scriptures make it clear when this is going to happen, which is the subject of this video. This is even spoken of so frequently by ancient prophets in conjunction with other events and the order of those events that we can pinpoint the order of the events in a remarkable way. In order to identify when an event will occur, we need to triangulate it with other events. Triangulation allows us to determine the relative position of something based on an uh, anchor point. The more anchor points you have, the more accurately you can pinpoint the location. Spiritual triangulation happens in the same way, which is why, quote, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, God's word can be established. Signs of the times work in the exact same way. And scriptural triangulation is very similar. When you have scripture that talks about a particular event, the surrounding verses can lead to enhanced understanding. I believe this is why the Lord often says, quote, watch and pray, so that we can be prepared. Let's take Revelation 16, verses 16 through 21, for example. We can take the order that these events occur in and plot them chronologically. So you can see here that Armageddon precedes the great earthquake. Not that this gives us specific dates of these events, but we know the order of them so that we can see them come to pass and we can expect the next. Now the order things are in scripture does not always match the order that they're going to happen in real life, but there are clues to help us be as accurate as possible. For example, when you see words like and the or and there and similar words or phrases, it is usually showing a continuous set of events. When you can then triangulate with other scriptures, you can then be even more certain of a sequence of events. But then you have to be careful because you see something like, quote, they shall come forth even the dead which die in me, speaking of the righteous and their resurrection. And you would think, hey, we can just put that right here after the earthquake. But if you continue reading, it says, but behold, I say unto you that before this great day shall come. So now it appears that we have skipped ahead a little bit. And all we know is that the resurrection of the faithful happens sometime after the earthquake, but we can't place it precisely yet. But we have a new event that gets added. The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall be turned to blood, and the stars shall fall from heaven. But where does this go? Well, we correlate it with other scripture verses such as that in Doctrine and Covenants 8887, which talks about the exact same event. This one seems to time both the earthquake and the events with the sun, moon, and stars at the exact same time. In Joel 13, 15, and 16, it also talks about the same sun, moon, and stars event, but references both Armageddon and the earthquake. We start realizing that these events happen at the exact same time and perhaps even have the same root cause. There are many other verses of scripture that tie these events together and reinforce the same basic timeline. Some of these verses, such as Revelation 6.12, give us a bit more detail. In this version, the heavens are also rolled together like a scroll. But when we get to Doctrine and Covenants 45, verse 47 and 48, we learn what the cause of the earthquake is, and it isn't a chance event. The earthquake happens when the Lord sets his foot upon the Mount of Olives. It cleaves the Mountain of Olives in twain. Additional details are also given in Revelations 11.13. The arm of the Lord falling upon the nations is referring to Armageddon, the final battle when the Gentiles are attacking Jerusalem. At the last minute, the Lord will save the Jews. Interestingly, we know exactly when this is going to occur. Not the exact date, but the exact point and sequence. We know that the two witnesses preach in Jerusalem for three and a half years prior to their death. Three and a half days later, they are resurrected, and according to Revelation 11, all of these events that we've been talking about happen in that same hour. Some may say that this is an hour according to the Lord's time, but I don't think so. Either way, we will know if we watch and pray. Now, if we look at this 
last day's timeline here. You can see that we have the two witnesses in Jerusalem, which represents this bar of time just before the second coming. This entire bar here represents the time that the signs of the times are occurring. To give you some sense, if we go into the signs of the time, we can see that Armageddon is occurring, the resurrection of the two witnesses, and then all of these events are occurring at the same time. We're going to talk about these a little bit more. So you can see here with these verses being correlated, a unique event is color-coded, so all of the orange is about the sun, moon, and stars. Everything that's in yellow is where the earthquake occurs and so forth. And you can see that these occur all at the same time. These signs of the times precede the second coming. As most of us know, the second coming is not a singular event. Christ appears to different groups prior to his coming where everyone will witness it. What is being described in these verses is Christ's appearance to the Jews. Ezra Taft Benson described it this way, Another appearance of the Lord will be to the Jews. To these beleaguered sons of Judah, surrounded by a hostile Gentile army, who again threatened to overrun Jerusalem. The Savior, their Messiah, will set his foot on the Mount of Olives. This is the event we hear a lot about. Doctrine and Covenants 45, 51 to 53 describe this sad but touching event this way, quote, And then shall the Jews look upon me and say, What are these wounds in thine hands and in thy feet? Then shall they know that I am the Lord, for I will say unto them, These wounds are the wounds with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. I am he who is lifted up. I am Jesus that was crucified. I am the Son of God. And then shall they weep because of their iniquities, and they shall lament because they persecuted their king. But what happens as a result of this worldwide earthquake? Well, this is where you're going to really have to decide if you believe the scriptures and Revelation because it sounds unbelievable. Bottom line is this event breaks down the mountains and the valley shall not be found. Then he commands the great deep, which gets driven back into the north countries. Oh, and remember wondering what happens to the islands that flee? Well, they become one land. But here's the kicker. The earth shall be like it was in the days before it was divided. Yeah, that means this. Now your wheels are turning right now because you're thinking, wait, when does this happen? You forgot my timing already, didn't you? Well, trust your instincts because you're right. This happens before the second coming. Now hopefully it makes a bit more sense how there will be those in the quote north countries and how they will smite the rocks and the ice shall flow down. Just to be clear, no one is living under the ice caps, no matter what your crazy uncle says. But seriously, stop and realize what has to happen prior to the second coming. I hear so many people say, I can't wait for the second coming, as if nothing is going to change. Like the wicked will be destroyed, and that means smaller lines at Walmart. No, the entire world changes between now and then. But this massive earthquake is only one in a series of events that happen at this time, including the heavens getting rolled up like a scroll. Now, there are many that believe that this is nuclear war. And with the visual image of stars falling from heaven, I can see how people would think that. But a nuclear bomb doesn't cause tectonic shifts of the Earth's mantle. So what could? Just about the only thing that meets all of the criteria of having all of these events at once would be a meteor strike. Now, I don't like to get into speculation, but this subject just wouldn't feel complete if we just left it up to everyone's imaginations. The heavens rolling up like a scroll, hail and fire, which can happen with either a volcano or a meteor strike, smoke, darkness, moons turning to blood due to pollution, stars falling from fallout of the strike, tsunamis having their seas over their bounds. They have even recently determined that a meteor strike at the right speed and angle could move the continents. So I'm not trying to predict anything, I'm just saying for the record, this is my bet. The verses talk at length about how the mountains will be made into valleys and brought low, and the new mountains will emerge from flat areas. Think about that for a minute. There are dozens of scriptures that reference the mountain of the Lord or Mount Zion. These verses, when studied carefully, make it clear that it is talking about Zion, the New Jerusalem. This will be in Independence, Missouri. Have you been to Independence? Did you see any mountains? This is why I believe so many people think it's talking about Salt Lake City. 
But if you read the bottom of these verses, they make it very clear that it is talking about a time when the word of the Lord is coming out of Jerusalem. That is at the beginning of the millennium, and Zion is in Missouri at that time. How is Missouri going to become mountainous? The great earthquake. It has also been documented that vegetation growth is at its highest right after volcanic activity. This would be the same with a meteor strike. Either of these events puts millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Droplets of sulfuric acid form and reflect sunlight which cools the planet and as a result the productivity of plants increases. Could this be the process by which the earth during the millennium returns to an Eden-like terrestrial state? There are dozens of scriptures that describe this transformation. Some believe the great earthquake to be a singular event, separate from anything else. To me, it seems that these events are far more related and interconnected. And while the wickedness of the world will cause greater amounts of earthquakes in diverse places, plagues, wars, and natural disasters between now and when Christ returns, it seems that this last great earthquake is part of a larger set of events that usher in the millennium and an entirely new world with its paradisiacal glory. The good news is that while we still don't know when Christ will come in his glory, we will know when these final events will happen, if we, as the scripture says, watch and pray.